on to chapter 26 of The Wise Enchanter. Zigzagging through the water to avoid massive floating chunks of ice, the children sailed quietly on. No birds sang and around them silence grew. It grew and it grew until it was almost unbearable. There was no color in the world, no light, no sound, just a misty nothingness, a cold emptiness, until Rukmini said at last in a tiny voice, only one page left. The children looked at one another and then down at the magic book, which, because it was so heavy, had to be kept in the center of the boat. Around them, it felt as though it should be night, but they couldn't tell. There was no way of knowing where the sun was. Behind them, they left a thin trail of white foaming in the freezing dark sea. In front of them, the water and ice spread out like a blotchy, inky carpet that could easily swallow them and leave not a trace. It was as though all the ink in the world, every single drop was contained in the dense deep waters and would gladly seep over anything. Suddenly in the distance, something caught Saifo's eye. Is that a cloud? He asked. I can't see it, Rukmini said. Where? High, up, right there. It looks like, no, it is a turret. It's some kind of spire. It's our eyes playing tricks on us. It can't be real. I see it too. It is real. Could it be? No, cried Rukmini. It can't possibly be. We can't be there yet. We only have 25 letters. We have to have 26 before we arrive. It must be a trick. But look, it's so beautiful, Lauren gasped. It looks like it's made of glass and light. There was a tiny gap in the clouds just above the tallest spire. A single ray of sunlight shone down through the gap and turned the spire into a brilliant rainbow, which vanished almost as soon as it appeared. For a moment, it looked like dying evening light. Then the gap in the clouds closed as mysteriously as it had opened. Darkness seeped across the world behind them, and the children could see their own shadows growing longer. There were no waves, but suddenly the boat lurched to the left. I think we've hit a rock, Michael said. Then the boat lurched to the right. Rukmini ran to the edge and peered over. Oh, she choked. The boat lurched again, left, then right. It's Urkel, she cried. The monster's name hung in the air, which suddenly became too thick to breathe. The sea was so black now that she could see nothing beneath the surface. The boat lurched again. This time, water poured in over the side. Sensing danger, the underlings crept out from their comfortable folds and creases and bags. They perched on shoulders on the sails of the boat anywhere high. The dormouse climbed out of the bag and ran up the mast, where he hung on for dear life. Then everyone saw what they had been dreading all along. A few hundred feet away, an inky, slimy, scaly tail thrashed up out of the water, sending a shower of cold sea over everyone. There was a thunderous roar and a splash, and then, right next to the little boat, something exploded out of the sea. It was so hideous that no light had ever revealed it. The children gazed at it for a few frozen moments, then it sank back down again into the water, sending the boat rocking far over the waves. Help! Lauren tried to call out, but her voice stopped in her throat. Hold on to the magic book, Michael called, as the bottom of the boat was bumped and thumped from underneath. It rocked to the left and right, waves splashing into it from both sides. The book's too heavy, said Sifo. What are we to do? What about the magic opal, Rukmini asked Lauren and began to cry. Good idea, Lauren whispered and fumbled for it. She held it up and tried to see into it. Tell us what you see, Michael said, battling to untangle himself from the sail. I see. Oh, it looks like the dragon ship and, and... Then with a splatter and a groan, which sounded like the breaking of a thousand ships, the monster beneath the boat lifted the small vessel high into the air and dropped it. The last thing the children saw as the boat turned upside down and plunged downward was the magic book, all 25 of its pages fluttering wildly as it fell toward the darkness of the deep. The children were freezing and coughing and wet and afraid. 
and looking for one another as they came to the surface of the water, so far apart that none could see the other. The sea rocked and churned and boiled as if this was indeed the end of the world. Suddenly, through the darkness, the children saw a ghostly white form on the horizon. It was a ship, a ship they recognized, floating rapidly and silently toward them, with a stern dragon head at its prow and a lady in white at its helm. The lady in white reached down and threw out into the sea one, two, three, four, five ropes. They uncoiled through the air like enormous gossamer spider webs and caught each of the children and the dormouse, sticking to them fast and drawing them swiftly toward the ship. Once on deck, the children wept and embraced one another and the dormouse and turned, dripping and cold, to thank the white lady, old Dame Gothel. My dears, she said, you've done such good work. Oh, but we haven't, cried Lauren. It's all lost now. It's all over. And all of the underlings have vanished. She buried her face in her hands and wept. They felt a bump beneath the hull and another. Oh, no, they shrieked in one voice. A black shape swirled up through the water at the side of the ship. Suddenly, Sipho thought of the gift he'd received. He unbuttoned his wet pocket and reached inside and took out the beautiful xylophone. There was a flash like a distant flicker of lightning and the xylophone stood there in front of him as large as its original size. That is the music that could melt the heart of a monster, he remembered Madame Conch, Madame Conch and saying. So he began to play. The music rose up from the ship and floated out over the water hovering there for a while in an echo that everyone could almost see. Sipho played on and on, and as he played, it was as if the thick, oily water began to lose its density. The air lost its heaviness. The others looked over the edge of the ship. For a moment, they saw the enormous, dark, hideous shape of the monster. They saw his long tail and gigantic limbs and the head that it reared at them so terrifyingly out of the water. Then the water shimmered. No one could see exactly what was happening, but it looked as if the monster's limbs became rounder and then drifted away like great globs of oil. Where his giant tail had been, a dark patch of bubbles rose to the surface of the sea and burst. The children watched in awe as the dense darkness became lighter. He is, after all, only a creation. If cold, cruel, ignorant hearts and minds can allow him such, allow such a monster to form, then warm, kind, knowing hearts can uncreate him, said old Madame Gothel, old Dame Gothel. They watched as all the darkness under the boat finally dissolved first into black shadows and then into oily patches that evaporated in the sun. The sun! It began to break through the clouds and the children felt as its warmth on their cheeks as though someone were gently touching them. Unaccustomed to the light, their eyes could scarcely bear its brilliance. All around them, the sound of dripping and cracking could be heard as great lumps of ice, both near and far, melted and splashed into the sea. There it is, Rutmini gasped, the castle of the wise enchanter. Across the water, rising up out of the evaporating fog and drifting mists, stood a castle so beautiful that the words could not capture its magnificence. The sun reflected off its high glass spires and turrets. Ahead, the children could see a golden beach. Beyond that, behind the castle, they could see that the hills that had been covered with snow and ice were now beginning to turn green. So here we are, Lauren said in a small voice, without the magic book, and only 25 out of 26 letters, and no underlings. Everyone was solemnly silent. The dragon ship sped toward the beach, and old Dame Gothel reached for an anchor made of pure, solid gold. Help me lift this. Children, we'll have to walk through the water for the last bit of the journey. It took all of them and the dormouse to heave the anchor over the side of the ship. As they watched it descend, they marveled at how clear the water was. It was as pure and still as blue-green glass. 
By now, the mist had completely evaporated. The children and the dormouse climbed down from the ship into the water and waded through the transparent blue sea toward the beach. There, suddenly, a wide pathway appeared. It zigzagged from the sand up through an undulating green lawn to a door in the palace studded with enormous jewels. The pathway is a zigzag Z, shouted Michael, and his voice caught in his breath as he turned to look at his friends. We have the 26th letter, Rutmini exclaimed. We found the last one. Oh, she put her mouth, her hand over her mouth so quickly she wouldn't say any more. The final letter, Sipho said softly, but too late for us, too late. The four children stood there gazing quietly at the pathway. It's never too late, whispered a voice somewhere overhead. Sipho looked up, the others looked up. Old Dame Gothel's mouth dropped open in surprise. Never too late, never too late. The whisper echoed through the sky. Laughter shimmered in the air. The underlings, Lauren exclaimed. They have wings, Michael cried. They're all green and yellow and shining. They're carrying something, Rukmini said, hopping from one foot to the other. Drop it, folks, drop it, cried the leader of the underlings from the air. There was a thud as the magic book fell into the sand and landed open on the very last page. With a whirring of wings, 201 underlings landed on the shoulders of the four children. They watched carefully as the picture of the last letter, the zigzag pathway to the castle in front of them, was drawn by everyone's hands in the final page of the magic book. The drawing seemed to finish itself beneath the children's fingers. When it was done, the children looked at it in awe for a long time and then shut the magic book. What happened? Lauren finally asked the underlings. Well, we weren't always underlings, one said. We were air spirits. Thank you very much. Until Urkel started getting strong, it got so cold and the air got so heavy that our wings just shriveled up. So we had to go live underneath. We knew the wise enchanter could help us, but we didn't know how to find him, said another. But our wings had begun to grow back already because of your warmth and kindness, said another on Rakmini's shoulder. We felt wings itching and itching to grow when we were all riding on the yak. Yes, said the leader. And when the monster lifted the boat up and our bodies felt air rushing through them, our wings unfolded in an instant and we caught the magic book as it fell to the sea. Oh, my dear, dear underlings, I beg your pardons, air spirits, I should say. You've saved the journey for us. But what about the wise enchanter? Lauren asked carefully. He's waiting for you, said a lovely musical voice. The children turned. Across the beach walked the most beautiful woman that anyone had ever seen. She had long golden brown hair and a diamond crown on her head, and the smile on her face was as warm as the sun. She came to stand before them. My name is Gadrin. I am the wise enchanter's da daughter and also the dolphin you met at the start of your journey, and the one you rescued in the cleft in the rocks. I owe you my thanks. Let me show you to my father. Michael bent down to pick up the magic book. Either this isn't as heavy anymore, or I'm getting stronger, he said. The others laughed with delight. I believe someone needs my help at sea, said old Dame Gothel suddenly. I'll return shortly if you don't mind. The children waved and then watched as Gadrin, Gadrin, sorry, began to walk, or glide rather, along the zigzagging path that led to the great castle doors. So that was chapter 26, and they found the Z. I'm sure you can see the Z. But for some reason, I just don't feel like the story is finished. Do you? Well, it's not. This book has what's called an epilogue. It has a chapter that ties everything up for us, and I will read that for you in the next on the next link.